Hey you guys, welcome back. All right, in this video, which has been so highly requested, I'm gonna show you how I make my planner rings from scratch in Procreate. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so you can see I just have a blank canvas. Now what I did was just go to the main screen, um, say that I wanted to start a new document and picked the square option, which is I believe it's like just over 2000 pixel square, I think. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just fill my square with color. It doesn't matter what color. In fact, I think I'm gonna make it light so that you guys can differentiate it from the background. So we've got just a plain square. You're gonna hit your arrow tool here. See where it says uniform down here at the bottom? You're gonna change that to free form. And then I'm just going to pull this down. Now this is gonna be the height of your ring. So if you want like a really thick chunky ring, you wanna make it taller. If you want a thin, like a uh, really little one, make it a little shorter. I'll just kinda of go just under a third of the width of the square or the height of the square. So now we just have a square of color going across the screen. Now I'm gonna create a new layer, change my color so that you guys can see and I'm just going to get a standard uh, brush pen, not a um, soft one. You want a firm, solid pen. And it's also not um, touch sensitive. So it's one solid line. It's not like a calligraphy pen where it's smaller on one end. I'm going to draw a circle, hold until Procreate adjusts it. Then the top here in the middle, you see where it says edit shape. You're going to hit that make it a circle. So now we have a perfect circle that we're going to again fill with color. I'm going to hit my move tool. This time I'm going to keep it on uniform. And on the outside of this circle, you have these um, dotted lines. I'm going to match those to my original shape. So now this circle is the same height as my original rectangle. I'm going to slide it until it butts up to the just about the end. I mean, I yeah, it'll snap into place at the end there and that's fine. Now I'm going to highlight my layer, swipe left, duplicate, hit my arrow tool again, and now I'm going to move it to the other side. Make sure it matches. You can see those blue lines that go across. You want it to have blue lines at the top, middle, and bottom of your circle, whoops, then you know that it is lined up on all counts. I'm going to slide her just a little over so it's touching the edge just like it was on the other side. And now I'm going to merge those two circles into one layer by just pinching the layers together like this. Okay, so now I can go to my uh, rectangle layer. I'm going to get my eraser tool. Make sure it's on a hard eraser because you don't want anything left behind opacities at 100%. And then I'm going to erase everything not in the center of the circles. So I'm not going to touch here, only what's on the outsides. So like this. And then I'm going to copy my original color and then change my circles to match it merge all those layers together and now we have a basic ring shape which you can then pull into the center of the canvas because now we got to make the holes in the paper so I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to go ahead and make these black same brush as before draw your circle hold edit shape circle and now I'm going to adjust the size using the uniform adjustment until it's just a little bigger than my shape. Now you want to make sure that this yellow line is showing up, showing that your circle is centered on your original shape. And then I'm going to fill it with black. Same thing. I'm going to dupe it, slide it over. I want this one to be the same um, distance apart. So I'm just going to 
come under here so that I can see what I'm doing. And then again, watch for those um, snap lines that'll tell you if it's the if it's lined up with the other circle. And then I'm just going to actually, I think I'm going to move these to the outside. That way we are 100% sure that they are the same distance apart. And then I can get my um, my ring free form and just slide it over. Once I center that in place, it'll be perfectly even on both sides. So I'm going to pinch to merge my circles together like that. So then at this point, we have a really basic ring concept going on, but we have absolutely no dimension. So let's change that. I'm going to touch the ring layer, which here is layer one. I'm going to select and then I'm going to hit layers plus to create a new layer. Now I'm going to go to my soft airbrushing tool. I'm not quite at full opacity and I'm, I'm at about 80% black color. Pretty close, about 30% size wise. Obviously these settings could be different on your tablet because I have altered my brushes, but you just want something that's going to give you a soft, even color like this. Now, with the way that I use my rings, I have it, or my planning spreads, I'm essentially looking straight down. I'm not looking at an angle. If you're looking at my spread, you'll know what I mean. So everything is flat as if I'm looking directly from above. So directly from above, this top part would have a bit of shadow dimension as well. Not quite as heavy as the bottom layer is going to but it's definitely going to be there for dimension purposes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn uh, to my erase tool. I'm going to change it to a soft brush. Go down to my layer one, which is your base layer of your ring. And I'm going to brush away just the edges. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do this without the selection on. That way I'm sure to get the actual edge as well. And again, this is a soft erase because you want it to look like it's disappearing into the holes, not just an abrupt cutoff. It does look a little abrupt here, but if I were to take this circle layer and bring up the brightness on it just a little, you would see it gives that illusion that it's starting to drop off into there. And then you can also, if you see, feel that you need to, you can do that same thing with your shade layer. I don't think I really need to though. So it'll look something like this. Now I'm going to select this again. And then I'm going to hit plus again. Now this layer is between um, the other two. I'm going to start adding some highlight here using the same soft shading brush. So it's giving it a bit of a, a point. And you can build up your shading just like that. And then if you want it to have more of a curved effect, you can take your soft brush again on that same layer with the highlight and then brush off the edges of the highlight color because you want it to still be visible but you don't want it to go all the way to the end that gives the strongest highlight right at the top gives it more of a rounded effect so now i'm going to duplicate our base layer highlight the bottom one come up here to your adjustments panel brightness on the entire layer, I'm going to drop down to zero, which is essentially going to give it a black layer. Let me show you that. In fact, see, now it turned it black. So I'm going to hit my adjustments again, Gaussian blur, layer. This is going to give you your shadow. See that? You don't want to go too heavy handed with this because you want it to look realistic. So about to there. 
And then I'm actually going to select this again. And I want to darken the shadows on the edges here because it's looking a little bulbous to me. There we go. And then just play with it. Find what works for you. And that's pretty much it. Now, at this point, on this green layer, you can hit your plus sign again. Tap that layer, which says layer six. Insert a clipping mask. And now I can drop color here and turn this ring any color that I want to. Super simple. And you can also, in fact, I'm going to clear the content off of it. I'm going to change the color of my bottom layer to something that's more neutral. And then I can go to, say, this bright blue. Select maybe a splatter brush. And you can color on top to create fun patterns like that. That kind of gave it like a, a granite sort of look. So at this point, we have a pretty functioning ring. So I'm going to go to my canvas, crop and resize. And I'm going to bring this in. So it's almost touching the holes like this. Turn off my background layer. And then I'm going to go to actions, share, PNG, and I'm just going to copy it. Then I'm yeah, going to come over here to Good Notes, Long Press, Paste, and then you can just paste them right here. Let me get rid of all this other crap. So then you can space them as far apart as you want to. Super simple. So that is it. That's pretty much how I create my rings. Um, these are obviously for a more landscape orientation. If you have a two page spread that you're working with, um, you can do these for portrait. That is a different process for me. Uh, if you guys want me to show you that process, just let me know in the comments and I'll go ahead and make that happen also. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, shading can be tricky not gonna lie but just remember to always select the layer you want to shade and then create a new layer so you're not messing with your base safe layer so that's going to be it for me you guys if you have any other questions go ahead and leave them in the comments um and yeah thank you for watching i will see you in the next one bye